Hello, I'm Tim Cook, and I'm going to show you our Cook edger. And uh, I want to show you the features about this edger that make it a strong edger, makes it a straight cutting edger, easy to maintain edger, and, uh, and, and it's just very uh, user friendly. And that's what we like. Now, one of the most important things that I want in an edger, I come from the old school when we had edgers that the board would go in and it'd rainbow out to the right. And you'd adjust on that thing and it'd rainbow out to the left. And you'd adjust on it. Never could get a straight board. And, and straight lumber is very important to cook saw. Straight lumber is what I want an edger to produce. And, uh, and so this edger will do exactly what I'm telling you. It'll cut straight lumber every time. And, uh, and what makes it do that is you'll notice it's got a rough top belt in feed, rough top belt out feed. We have these things aligned so that when that rough top belt feeds it straight in, the other one feeds it straight out. And that's what makes it be a, a very straight cutting edger. Having the ability to fine tune adjust that rough top belt is very important. And we have those features on this edger. Inside, we'll show you a little later on, but I'll go ahead and tell you, inside on the shaft, we have split saws. They're, they're strobe saws, but they're split. Four bolts, you take two halves out, it's easy to change. The old edgers, you had to take the side off of them, and, and it was a half a day job just to change a set of saws. But these are easy to change, you can change them out in 20 minutes. Another very important thing to me is how do these saws open and close? Now our right hand, or, or from where I am right here, the saw on the left hand side is the operator would stand, but it's a stationary saw. So we're only moving one saw. Now we could build a model that would move two saws, but this is our standard model. And I'll show you for reasons why, because we have a guide that lines up with this, right, this particular saw over here. I'm calling it right hand, but, but I mean it's on the left side as you're in the operator's position. But, but anyway, these, this, this saw moves open and closed. Very important, it opens accurately. And then when you stop it on three and a half, it is three and a half. We have an adjustable pointer that you can fine tune that adjustment so you're getting exactly the width lumber that you want. We have dual chains. That means there's a chain here and a chain here. When this shaft is rotated by handle here, you can see down in, as the pointer guide moves, that is exactly what that saw blade is doing in there. Now on this particular one, you can see a sprocket over on this shaft. And so as I move this handle, that pointer moves exactly like the saw blades do. But the saw blades are moved by two chains. So we've got two chains up in here and it moves that saw precisely just like that pointer moves. That's very important because if I wanna cut a board that's three and a half wide, I want it to be three and a half wide. One of the things that I really like to do with an edger, and I'm gonna show you in just a little bit, I like to take my sawmill and I like to cut lumber two inches thick as wide as it'll go. It doesn't matter to me if it's 11 inches, 13 inches, 16 inches, I don't care. Because what I'm gonna do is stack that and let it dry. Then I'll come back to my edger and I'm gonna use these guides. I've, I've got a guide that moves in and out on this side, and I'm gonna use that guide and my dimensions, and I'll cut dimension lumber, and I don't need a planer to cut dimension two by fours, two by sixes, and two by eights. I'll cut this lumber dead on five and a half if I want two by sixes, that way it matches the lumber market. I'll cut it dead on three and a half if I wanna match the lumber market so that I can build the buildings I want or sell it to my neighbors and they can build the buildings they want. Because this edger cuts a very straight board, yeah, and people who have been in the sawmill industry know that when lumber starts to dry, it bows, it turns, it, it makes crooked. And so the only way you can have it straight is to saw it straight after it turns. Now, a planer doesn't straighten anything out. It just planes the edges and it planes the surfaces. But this edger is better than a planer when it comes to structural uh, two by fours, two by sixes, two by twelves, whatever. When, when you've got in the two by market and you want straight, this edger is the answer to that, to that problem. And, uh, and I'll show you that a little bit later on. Uh, just to show you, I ran this board just a few minutes ago and, uh, and it can kind of pan in on it. That is a straight piece of lumber. I've measured it already with my rule and it's three and a half inches. And that's what I had my scale set on. 
all the way, three and a half inches all the way. When I can cut straight two befores, that makes me happy when I'm building. It'll make any builder happy. The nice part about cutting rough lumber and then edging it to a dimension is now I've got a nice thick piece of two before and I can, if I'm putting it on a wall that, that needs on a stud wall and I want to find sheetrock nails and put in it, it's easy to find. It's pretty aggravating to find an inch and a half, uh, inch and a half stud wall when I'm putting sheetrock in. And uh, I know that anybody that's ever done it, you fight that, especially if the lumber's crooked. It makes it even harder. But, uh, but when you got straight lumber, it's extra thick. It makes everything look better. The whole wall looks better. The roof line looks better. Everything on that house will look better. Over on this guided side, first thing I'll show you is this guide. This will move to six inches to the left of that stationary saw that I was telling you about. It'll move six inches. Now, we've got a little scale here that gives you a good idea. We're not trying to be real accurate with this scale. We're just wanting to know, am I cutting about two inches off? Every piece of lumber that comes off of these mills, I shouldn't have said every piece. I should have said 75%. 75% of the lumber that comes off of this, these mills, these bandsaw mills, has what I call a relative straight edge. And what I mean by that is this edge is relatively straight, but I need to cut an inch and a half to an inch and a three quarters. On up in this area, I may need to cut two inches. I can just take a quick glance and I can go, wow, that, that'll give me, with a little bit of fudge and a little bit of bark up here, I can get a six inch board out of that. And so, once I look at this and I go, you know what, I'll cut one and three quarters off of this side, I'll set this fence at one and three quarters. When I lay this board up and push it against that fence, because of my relative straight edge, now I'm going to send it through and get a straight piece of lumber. And that's what I like about this guy. Now this, on the other hand, is something that, is, that, that improves even more. I've got a sight line now that I can look down and see if I've made a good choice or not. But as I sight down there, I go, well, that'd be a good place to run that. In just a few minutes, we'll run that board, let you have an idea. Uh, <clears throat> we've got rollers on top, as you can see. If a board needs to come back and be re-edged, the tail guy can send that board back. We've got nice rollers in the front here that feed onto the rough top belt. We have a heavy, a uh, smooth roller uh, up here that holds the board down on top of the rough top belt to hold it straight. We have a heavy roller on the exit side. And then on the tail end, we have a couple of more of these, these easy to spin rollers here. We have a clamp on this turn shaft that when you turn it, you can lock it. So if I'm cutting a bunch of dimensions, I'll, I'll set this on five and a half just to show you. I'll lock this thing. It's a squeeze lock collar that locks that shaft. Now it can't vibrate loose. I can confidently know that I'm cutting five and a half and I can run a thousand board feet at five and a half inches if that's what I want to do.
I want to show to you the, uh, the hydraulics. We have a flow control here, which is basically a flow divider, and it operates the hydraulic motor that controls the belt. So you can speed the belt up, slow it down. If you have things that are extra hard or extra thick, then you can slow them down. If it's soft wood and air, you can speed it up a little bit faster. We have a Prince hydraulic pump. We have a tank. It comes through a strainer. It has the filter. It has the flow control. We use Charlin hydraulic motors. I'll show you that so you can understand. There are some of the, the manufacturers that manufacture edgers and they put a lot more hydrostatic drive on there. This is about 10 times heavier and stronger built than, than the uh, hydrostatic drive that comes off the lawnmower. So I wanted you to see that. It's a, it's a well-built system, a well-proven system. We've been using those Prince uh, pumps and this same hydraulic type system for over 25 years. It's well-proven, it's very strong, and it's very durable. The uh, horsepower that we have on this particular one, I believe is a 35 horsepower. It, uh, for, most par uh, for most people, 25 horsepower is enough. We do have diesel models available with Perkins engines. We have electric motor models. So anything that a person needs, you know, as far as the power source, we have the common that's, that's available today. We have a e-stop and uh, it will kill the engine. And uh, on the far end, we have an e-stop down there as well just so that in case of emergency, somebody can stop this thing. I'm gonna open the uh, top lid up. We have this bolted down for a reason. We don't want people to be able to just unlatch, open it up, and try to get in here and clean something out while it's running. We want it to be a little inconvenient. You have to take at least one bolt loose before you can open up and look inside. Then you can take these four bolts out and, uh, and then you can change your blades, get to everything that's in there. This. We have the lid that opens up so you can access your saw blades. There's a switch right here that when that lid opens, it's going to kill that engine. You, here you'll see the split saw blades. This is a strobe saw with a split, but it's split all the way through to the collar. You got four bolts. Two bolts hold this half, two bolts hold that half. We've been using this system for many years and it works really good. We have a bearing here with a collar that goes through the bearing. And, and then it slides, that collar slides on the shaft. You still can't see the double chains from here, and you won't hardly be able to see that, but this, you'll notice when I move this saw, it moves precisely where it should be. There's nothing in here flopping around. There's nothing to be uh, anything that is, uh, that's loose. And many of the old edgers, they, they had saw blades that, that were guided with pegs, and they pushed it with a lever from over on the front side and it was just very uh, impractical to even get something accurate. But I'm gonna show you how that moves and it'll stop anywhere you want it to stop. And it will also close all the way in to a very close margin of about one inch between the teeth here, one to one and eight, something like that. And uh, without hitting any of the teeth or causing any difficulty. Uh, that that is the heart of this edger, right there. The saw blades, the shaft that's true, the, uh, the belts that bring it in accurately, the belts that take it out accurately, that is the heart of a good, strong edger, and that's what we build at Cook Saw.